Hi, this is a Yesterday's Moose production, and today we're playing... That's right, we're playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game, by Konami. And we're going to watch the attract screen to get some of the information about the turtles. So I'm going to do some fancy editing so we can see all the turtles. Leonardo. Michelangelo. Donatello. Raphael. By the way, this is what the artwork looks like on the side of the arcade game. Looks a little weird with the animated turtles, but a live action April O'Neil. Alright, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and insert a virtual coin. Because I'm playing this on my Super Console X with emulation. Emulation is great. I'm going to start with Leonardo. Hang on, April! The thing about the arcade version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you can't seem to change your turtle after a game over, which is very weird. So, since there are four turtles, I'm going to go through this game four different times, and I will change the turtle each time and record the results so we can see what they all look like. So you got yourself a regular attack, you got yourself a jump, got a jump kick, no, well, you have a jump sword attack as well it seems, a jump kick. As soon as they say jump kick, he does that. Okay, jump kick, like that, that's how you do it. And this jump kick as well. And your super attack, which is like a one shot, one kill for lower enemies at least. And the great thing about the so-called special move in this version is it doesn't use up any of your health, which is nice. Another good thing about this particular emulator is it doesn't have any screen tear. I was playing with a, a different emulator and it definitely had a lot of screen tear in that one. So the top half of the screen would be moving slightly slower or slightly faster than the lower part of the screen or various graphical weirdness like that. But this one works great. So I'm using it. Ah! Ah! So apparently there are, f what is it, seven different areas? We are currently in April's Hot Midtown Loft. Then we are on to Madison Square Avenue. Followed by Soho Sewer Systems, Times Square, Vinny's Valley Parking Garage. By the way, there's April. And then finally, the Technodrome. Say your prayers, Toidles. Say, 
So what's neat about this is that the turtles are voiced by the same voice actors as they are in the cartoon show that was popular at the time. I'm not sure of all the voice actors' names, but I do know one of them. His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. Well, that was easy. Shredder, on the other hand, is not voiced by Uncle Phil, a.k.a. Philip Banks, a.k.a. James Avery. So apparently in the cartoon show, they didn't have any burning building, but uh, in the movie, April's uh, store that she was owned, whatever store that she owned. I die. Tonight I die, that turtle soup. Turtle's loft. Uh, April's loft. Burned down. Remember that? And all the foot soldiers were attacking the floor. And they eventually fell through the floor and crashed through the level below. By the way, that's what happens when you fall in a manhole. So because there are seven levels and only four turtles, I can't equally divide the time for all the turtles. Like I wanted to have each turtle go through something like two levels, but it doesn't work out that way. It actually works out to one turtle equals I'll attack. Oh, I left that girl alone. I wanted to attack her. Okay, let's see what happens when you just stand around for a while. You make funny faces. But something happens. Eventually. Yeah, okay, each turtle will be playing 1.7 levels. So I got to kind of rough estimate when 0.7 of a level happens. Oh, I got hit by a mysterious bomb. So there you go. As you can see, when you continue, you just have the same turtle. It would have been nice if you could have picked a different turtle. By the way, in beat-em-ups, there always seems to be a section like this where you're kind of going down on an angle and there's like a storefront or buildings or whatever on the right-hand side. I don't think it happens in Final Fight, but it definitely happens in Streets of Rage. And there's probably a section like that in Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. I was watching my Let's Play for Michael Jackson's Moonwalker and while I was playing it I said that I was going to play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the arcade game. Okay, let's see what happens when Michelangelo stands still. Is it different? Does he have a different idol animation? Doesn't look like he's doing anything. By the way, this is what it sounds like when you insert quarters.
And the reason why I'm playing as Michelangelo now is because I'm 1.7 levels into the game. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going with. That's about 1.7 levels. Okay, also, let's break the fourth wall here for a moment. Why am I not taking damage? Well, because I'm able to enable cheats and I put infinite energy because I was tired of watching the turtle die. And we've already seen the animation of dying. We've already seen what happens when we continue. So really no need to to keep hearing that dying animation over and over. Shouldn't it be more like Watch your mouth, slide ball? Oh, by the way, I also put the game on easy. It doesn't really seem any easier, to be honest. Everybody seems to be taking the same amount of hits. And when I was taking any damage, it didn't seem to be any more or any less damage. So I'm not sure what difference it makes. However, I'm willing to bet if I put it on hard, that it would be insanely difficult. I, I would imagine when it was actually in the arcade, the arcade owners cranked up the difficulty as high as possible. Gotta make the moolah, you know? Mice in the background are kind of funny, considering, spoiler alert, we're going to be attacked by mousers. One thing about Ninja Turtle games that's a little bit boring, other than the bosses, all of the enemies are foot soldiers. They're just different color swaps. I mean, sure, sometimes they have weapons, or they're carrying something, or they're riding something, but they're all pretty much just the same dude. So Ninja Turtle names are one of those things that uh, I guess people like to memorize, like a trivia, like name all of the turtles, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael. Name all of Santa's reindeers. I'm being attacked can't think while I'm being attacked, even though I'm not taking any damage. Okay, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. Name all of the Street Fighter characters. Blue, Ken, Chun-Li, Blanca. Zengi, Belzim, Guile. Name all of the seven dwarves. Sleepy, Happy, Grumpy, Dopey, Sneezy, Bashful, and Doc. Name all of the elements on the periodic table. Duh. 
periodic what now? I do remember seeing the periodic table of elements, but I definitely absolutely do not have any of that information memorized. Oh, by the way, this is uh, Michelangelo's super move. All of the turtles basically have the same moves. Which is a little unfortunate. When I play the Simpsons arcade game, we will see how ambitious Konami got when it came to giving the characters different moves. However, they still didn't have a great variety of enemies. But the variety of enemies was better than Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So that's something. So we faced Rocksteady, we faced Bebop, and now we're going to be facing Baxter Stockman. Who originally in the comic was not a white guy, and they changed him to a white guy for the cartoon. But that was corrected in the Michael Bay Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. We all remember that classic gem. They got one thing right and everything else about it was wrong. So very, so very wrong. Look, I'm a new turtle all of a sudden. By the way, this is Raphael's special move, which is neat because it is in fact different from the other turtles and is slightly more effective because they can't seem to hit you when you're doing that. Also while playing it seems that Raphael was, is easier to attack enemies with. They don't hit him as often when he's attacking them. I guess they did that to compensate for the fact that his attacks are very short range. By the way, the reason why I'm playing a Raphael instead of, instead of Donatello is because I wanted Donatello to be the final character that I play to end the game with. Because in the video games, at least, Donatello is usually the best option, even in the NES game, because he has the most range, and that makes him the best. But uh, as far as favorite turtles are concerned, I think the movie version of Raphael is my favorite. Kind of matches my personality a little bit, believe it or not. Alright, maybe not so much. And the cartoon, yes, I do remember watching it when I was younger. And uh, who was my favorite turtle at that time? I, mean, I don't think I really had one. They were all kind of interchangeable to me and uh, I was young enough that I was watching the cartoon show but not young enough to buy Ninja Turtles toys if that makes any sense I mean sure I still watch animated shows now 
but uh, they were definitely more geared towards younger audiences at that time. There weren't too many adult-oriented cartoons, at least not on television. What's even weirder is I, I distinctly remember a time when Inspector Gadget was on one of the pay channels of all things. Like you had to pay money to watch Inspector Gadget. Sure, there were other things on that channel, I'm sure, but uh, Inspector Gadget was there as well. But who knows, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it wasn't one of the pay channels, maybe I just thought it was. At my house I didn't have anything like that. I grew up when I was a kid, we had uh, a black and white TV with a knob that you would turn to get the channels in. Eventually we upgraded and got a color TV. Uh, there was a period of time where I had a television of my own in my bedroom. Got it at a flea market and it had a very funny way of turning on. Uh, you couldn't just flick the switch and it would turn on. You had to kind of press down on, uh, like, it was like a light switch uh, up and down. And uh, you kind of had to press, hold the down, and then while giving pressure, then flip it up. I know that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but I always joked that it was kind of like uh, using a lighter and uh, there was like a, a, a stick in the television that would uh, light a, a fire that would illuminate the screen. I know over explaining the joke isn't as funny as, uh, as it could have been, but uh, that was, it was funny to me at the time. I'm not sure whatever happened to that TV. I think it stayed at the house. Uh, and then when I moved out on my own, I got another television, which was somewhat smaller. Had to have been somewhere between uh, 12 and 16 inches, maybe 20 at the absolute most, but it was, it was quite small, but I really appreciated having it at the time. The apartment that I was in, the, whoever had rented it before had cable, or maybe they were supplying cable to the whole building, and uh, absolutely certain the cable was not included. And uh, on my last month before I moved out, I made the mistake of telling the landlord, hey, uh, I haven't been getting cable this whole time, that's weird. And then, what do you know, coincidentally the cable goes out within a day or two. So for about two or three weeks, I lived without cable at that address. I should not have said something, because whoever moved in after me would have liked to have had cable. Okay, let's talk more about funny old technologies. Uh, the, tele the game system that I had as a kid, I didn't really have it. My uncle had it. It was an Intellivision. And that's the system that got me started on all of my uh, video gaming escapades. By the way, I like how they hit each other. My mom and my aunt were also very much into video games. Well, maybe not very much, but somewhat into video games. I'm going to make a compilation of the games that my mom played, either uh, for her birthday or another significant event. And uh, it should be interesting, maybe interesting to me. 
may be interesting to my 400 subscriber fan base because they will see the kind of interesting games that my mom liked. Oh, I'm losing health! I thought I was invincible. Why? Oh, my health keeps coming back, but now it goes away. Now it comes back. Wow, that's so weird. You would figure if you have infinite health that it wouldn't go down at all. These guys seem a lot tougher now. They're on easy, by the way. This is easy mode. April sitting there with her two dots for eyes and a dot for her mouth and no nose whatsoever. What have they done to you, April? What have they done? So aside from the knob on the TV that I also grew up with, there was a time when they brief, uh, we, I guess, briefly got uh, some sort of box. I guess it was connected to the cable. It was uh, like a remote, but it was physically connected to the cable box. And it had physical buttons that you would push down and they would go like, kajunk, kajunk. And uh, there was an individual button for each separate channel. Imagine that. Maybe I can find a picture of it. If I can, I'll put it up here now. Okay, I either found or did not find that picture. It also had a thing on the side and like there were three rows of buttons and there was like 10 buttons on each row and there was like this little thing on the side that you would put up to select the top row of buttons the middle for the middle row of buttons and then the bottom for the bottom row of buttons so imagine that you're like oh i want to watch channel one okay flip the thing up press channel one. Oh, i want to watch channel 12 okay flip it to the middle and 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 press channel 12 oh now I want to watch uh, another channel on the third row. Okay, put the thing down and uh, then press the button. <laughs> it's, it's so stupid. And it had a tuner. Like if the channel is going slightly fuzzy, it's basically the equivalent of a knob. You would like move it around to tune the channel in. Wow. How far technology has gone. I don't actually have cable anymore, so I don't have to deal with any of this. I watch it all online! Alright, here we are! And I kinda screwed up. Because I reset the game, the last level was so long that I thought I needed to change my turtle. So I restarted it and uh, then the game crashed, which was really weird. So I had to start all over again and uh, so I kept save stating over and over again. Finally, I'm back to where I left off. I'm not sure when point seven of this level will happen, but... At some point, I will change to Donatello, the final turtle of the game. I'm also going to show you what happens when uh, Raphael does his idle animation. I'm not sure I showed that off. By the way, uh... Raphael's special move, I just uh, found out while playing, is not as powerful as the other turtles. I guess that makes up for the fact that his attack is slightly more effective. Because normally a uh, special move would be a one-hit death, but with Raphael it's two. So this is his idle animation. Not very special. For some reason I think Leonardo's is the best. Because he kind of looks at the camera and sneers. Which is pretty funny. I 
Also, I've uh, been meaning to show some artwork. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that while I'm playing as Raphael. I was going to spread it out, <laughs> but I kept forgetting. Okay, let's hold off on the art for a moment here. I'm sure I did some fancy editing to cover up the fact that I was just staring at the screen for about 20 seconds while I pulled up the images on my computer because I forgot how many there were. And I got a, a lot of time for me to put them in. I think I'm going to change turtles when I get to the hovercraft section. That seems like a good time. There's also a lot of enemies. I don't remember there being this many enemies. At least we got these robot guys. They are different. Okay, so I did some artwork of Ninja Turtles on the Miiverse on my Wii U. So here's the first picture. Here's the second picture. Here's the third picture. Oh, and just for good measure, here's a... Oh, wait. Let me defeat this guy. I wasn't expecting him. And here's a picture of Sigmund Freud for no reason. Well, that was fun. And yes, like Sigmund Freud said, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. But he also said sometimes a cigar is not a cigar. Okay, he didn't say that, but he strongly implied it. When I was uh, in school, went to college and university, I was trying to get into film class, but none of the, the classes were available. So, arts would have been my major, and I was going to have psychology as my minor. And I was doing amazingly well in psychology, so I studied a lot about Freud and uh, Maslow and. Uh, what's his name? See, it's been so long I forget. Carl Jung, I think that's his name. Pretty sure it's his name. All of them have different ideas about what it requires to be a functional human. Maslow was more known for the uh, Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, which was uh, what he felt humans needed to survive, such as food, water, stability, emotional well-being, uh, intellect, all these different things, and uh, started with the base needs on the bottom going up to the most important needs on the top, or the most uh, needs that are furthest from what you would absolutely need to survive, but are great to have, I guess, to make you a super fully functional human being. Carl Jung was more about
but uh, Freud is more well known for things such as uh, uh, development of uh, humans. So there are different levels of development. So you might uh, be stuck in, say, uh, I don't even want to name them <laughs> because. Uh, I want to keep this PG, but if you were stuck in a certain age of development, you would have a insert name of said thing uh, fixation. So a blank fixation or a other blank fixation. Depending on uh, what stage of development uh, you were in. So if you didn't have a certain need met, you might end up having a fixation based on the need that you didn't get met. Time to change turtles, I think. No, we got these guys here. And boy, do they make me tired. Ba rum pum pum. More like boom. All right, now we are on hoverboards and are being attacked by helicopters. And I am finally Donatello. I've been playing this game for who knows how long now. When I reset the game, it was saying mask error when it was booting up and it was stuck on that screen and it wouldn't go past it. I kept resetting and resetting and nothing happened, so I had to reset the whole Super Console X and finally it started working again. You know, it's weird. Emulators are weird sometimes. That being said, I really like having my Super Console X. It has 50,000 games. I will never be able to play that many games in my life, and most of them I don't want to play. In fact, I only have um, just under 600 favorites, which is still quite a lot. Uh, it has different emulators, so if it doesn't work right with one emulator, you can try a different one. And that is the case for uh, all of the systems that it emulates. It emulates all of the 8-bit uh, systems, the NES, Super Ma uh, Sega Master System, and uh, various computers, Commodore 64, Atari ST, emulates the Atari 2600, although I haven't played any of those games because I have a compilation of those games on my uh, PlayStation 2, and uh, it has all the games that I want to play, so. Let's see, what else does it emulate? Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, and all of the Japanese variants for all of these things. It has, like, the Sega Mark III and whatever became uh, came before that it is virtual boy uh, it does not emulate Nintendo 64 very well there's about one or two games that I uh, am able to play that I wanted to play uh, most of the other ones I have on other consoles uh, such as my Wii U and even my Xbox in fact they're really uh, awesome versions on that. Uh, let's see, what else does it have? A PlayStation emulator! So there's a few PlayStation games that I have. It, it also does not emulate in television very well, which is unfortunate. There's at least one game that no matter what I do, it won't play at the correct difficulty setting because most of the games allowed you to pick different difficulty settings and for whatever reason the emulator won't let me do that so it defaults to the absolute hardest difficulty of course why would it default to the easiest difficulty and uh, pretty much makes it unplayable 
Also, what makes it unplayable is the controller. The uh, Super Console X comes with a PlayStation type controller. So that's not very good for Intellivision games. Intellivision had like a disc as the uh, joystick and uh, side buttons which were super painful to press. And it also had a, numer a numerical pad. Oh my god, these guys are just trapping me in the corner. Wow. So, I can play Tron Deadly Discs, which is one of my favorite games. That's fairly okay to play. It's hard to do one or two things. But what I really wanted to play was Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. And uh, you cannot play it because it just defaults to the hardest difficulty setting and it becomes impossible. Like, maybe if I was better, <laughs> I would be able to get through it, but no, I cannot. So if you had told my younger self, hey, you're going to be able to have access to literally almost every arcade game that you've ever played in your entire life with the exception of some of the uh, more modern 3D ones and you're gonna have access to every single NES game, Sega Master System game, Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, NES, all of those. Wow, if you had told me that I would be able to play all of those games, I would have freaked out. Oh, by the way, this guy's name is Granitor. I had to look it up because I didn't know what his name was. I don't remember him in the cartoon series, but I'm pretty sure he was there. Uh, I saw images of the toy online. So, because... As a kid, I was a lot more obsessive about video games. Yeah, I would have gone insane knowing how many games I have access to. Now, I just have so many, I'll play one for like five minutes and then I'll get bored and shut it off and never look at it again. Or maybe months later, pick it up and totally forget where I left off. Yeah. And that's just on my Super Console X. My physical game collection is... I don't know, like in the thousands? Well, not thousands of thousands, but at least 1,000, somewhere around there. I have a lot of physica physical games. In fact, most of my favorite games I have physically, uh, with the exception of games that I've downloaded on my Wii U, and in Wii mode on the Wii U, and the Xbox, and PlayStation 4 slash PlayStation 5 because I have the PlayStation 5 and I downloaded some PS4 titles and I also downloaded games on my Xbox One because I got some games on there. I've saved Splinter. Thank you, my turtles. I don't think he is the original voice actor. But whatever. So, I'm waiting for my capture card to like conk out. I've been playing this for so long. Typically, if I've been uh, playing a game for an hour or so, I have to like reset it. I have to unplug it and plug it back in. You know, because technology loves it when you do that. And that fixes 99% of all problems. Speaking of problems with technology, I'm really bummed that I can't seem to record in HD anymore. I'm thinking it's because I'm slowly using up all of the memory on my hard drive. 
for videos of Let's Plays like this one. Like, for example, the uh, raw data of uh, the video files before I edit them will take up a lot of space. Uh, that being said, I usually delete them after I'm done, but not always. Some of them I leave on my hard drive because I might need them for future videos. So I might have two or three videos worth of uh, raw data. And um, then when I edit it all together, that takes up a lot of space. I feel like I should get either a separate hard drive or maybe just a new, uh, a new computer because this one has some issues as well. For some reason, whenever I disconnect it, which I do almost uh, every second day, um, because I have to go somewhere and I bring the computer with me. Uh, every time I do that, uh, sometimes when I get home and I put the internet back in, the internet speed has significantly reduced, which is really ridiculous. So I have to like reset the computer. Uh, some of the programs take a long time to boot up. I really want to feel like I should give it to someone who knows way more about computers than I do and uh, have them go through it and see if there's some way I could improve the performance. But I don't really trust anyone enough. I feel like if I bring it to a store or something, they're just going to install some spyware or virus or whatever and steal my passwords and rob me of all my money in my bank. So... By the way, obligatory elevator and a beat em up cliche thing. Ding! <laughs> Doing a Cinnamon Sins thing. Guess this could be video game Sins. They don't have a video game Sins channel, they really should. Get someone on that internet. There's a number of cliches that you could keep bringing back over and over again. You could talk about weird glitches that happen. You know what's interesting, this game is pretty long, but the NES version has extra stages, so it's even longer. Imagine I was let's playing that. I'm not going to. Well, at least not now. Maybe in the future. Maybe. Who knows? I feel like if I did that, I'd have to let's play the original NES Ninja Turtles game, which I'm incredibly terrible at. Oh, those of you who've watched my channel or a random YouTube watcher who happens to stumble upon this Let's Play, you might have seen my video where I was talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collection and that I did not like it. And even though it was a highly sarcastic video and it was totally a parody of someone complaining about games like that, the internet took it very seriously. By the way, this guy is General Trag. Also had to look that up. So yeah, people took it really seriously and gave me a lot of hateful comments. It was fun. It did get uh, over 15,000 views, so if I actually monetized anything on my channel, I feel like maybe I could have made some money. Maybe I should look into that at some time. I mean, I won't make uh, any money off of that video, but uh, there were other videos in my, on my channel that did very well, and maybe other videos will do well in the future. I'm not sure what it takes to monetize a video or what you have to do. You probably have to do things a lot more professionally and add things such as 
like and subscribe and hit the bell and stand on your head and fart the national anthem. You know, you have to do that call to action, which I don't do. Occasionally I do, but don't really do. Anyways, I forgot what I was talking about. Something about, uh... Something. Let me just defeat this guy. He take, he's taking forever. Come on. This would be so much easier with another player. Or even four players at the same time. That would be great. So now I'm facing Krang. I am. That's a terrible Krang impression I was about to do. Why, please, get the ball. Something like that. I wonder how much money I would have spent at this point. More than 20 bucks, I'm sure. And, uh... Shredder has a, uh, attack that will defeat you, like, kill you in one shot, so... And if it doesn't work on me, I'm going to... remove the, uh... unlimited life allow it to happen because I want to see that animation because it's unique to Shredder. Oh, another weird thing about the Super Console X is apparently you're uh, be able to use other controllers, USB controllers and uh, Bluetooth connected controllers. But anytime I've ever tried my Xbox One controller, it doesn't work. And uh, when I try my PS3 controller, it also doesn't work. I mean, some of the buttons work, but not all of them, and some of the functions don't uh, register. So I'm not sure what that's all about. So yeah, I'm stuck with this really not so great PlayStation type controller. I bought another one online and and the select button on it didn't work which is funny which is all right you don't really need the select button you can just map the button to whatever you want so if your game requires the select button you can just map it to R2, R1, whatever L2, L1 I don't think he's killing me. Yeah, he's not killing me. So. Cheats. Enable disable cheats. Goodbye, infinite energy. None of you ever saw the option screen, by the way. Just forget what you saw. I'm not cheating, I'm super good at this game. I just never die. There we go, I turned into a little turtle. Do it again, one more time for good measure. Actually, I have 57 lives, whatever. I'm not gonna put the option back on. So, if I was spending money, I would be spending quite a lot, because this is where you lose most of your lives. Shredder, of course, takes forever to defeat, and has the one-shot one, uh, one shot kill. 
get to see him without his helmet. I've been playing this game for so long. Have I always been playing this? Is Ninja Turtles all there is now? Hey, look at my score! It's 420! Hooray! What are the odds of that? I'm not sure if some of the enemies go away, if there's more enemies if you pick a harder difficulty setting, but the fact that I end up with 420, that's kind of weird. I get for remember what Splinter's name was before he was transformed. I will put it up here now. Okay, that's what his name was, but I'm pretty sure Shredder's is Oroku Saki. Oroku Saki. Was uh, Splinter's name Mato Yoshi? I know I put it up on the screen, and all you out there know it now, but I'm seriously wondering. Shinjata! He's defeated, finally. Goodbye, Technodrome. Forever. Epilogue. Freaked the foot, mangled the mousers, and totaled the technodrome. That's turtle power! But what about the shredder and krang? Burned to toast, vaporized to milkshake, or escaped to dimension X? Until we know, none of us can sleep safely in our beds, er, shells. Alright, here are the credits. T-U-R-T-L-T power. T-U-R-T-L-T power. <laughs> T-U-R-T-L-T power. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ninja, ninja, rap, ninja, ninja, rap. Now that I got that out of my system, let's just go ahead and watch the credits, shall we? That's it for my amazing, super excellent Let's Play. Thank you very much for watching. This has been a Yesterday's Moose production and all. See you next time!